Hey friends, my name is Yi and welcome back to a new video for IGCC Geography and in this video we have 2.4 for weather for theme 2 for the course. So here are the specifications from the website. And we'll first look at weather station and weather instruments. So a weather station is a place where elements of weather are measured and recorded and in our syllabus the, the elements of weather are temperature, rainfall, humidity, air pressure, wind direction and velocity, sunshine and cloud cover. And the instruments used to measure those elements are stated uh, down here, where temperature is measured using a thermometer, or more specifically a Sipsa thermometer, that is kept in the Stevenson screen. Rainfall is measured using a rain gauge, humidity is measured using a wet and dry bulb thermometer or hygrometer, air pressure is measured using a barometer, Wind direction and velocity are measured using a wind or weather vane. Sunshine is measured using a sunshine thermometer. And cloud cover is measured by observation. And we'll start with temperature. So in the weather station, the maximum and minimum th uh, temperatures are recorded using this thing called a Sipsa thermometer, which is shown on the right here. So this is called a Sipsa thermometer. And it's a temperature measuring device that is designed to show the highest and lowest temperature reach uh, every day. Right, so how it works is that there, it's like a YouTube and it's filled with alcohol, which is the red part. And then it's filled with mercury at the bottom, right here. With that metal indices on each side of the tube, which is like right here, the little indices or little like tag. So when temperature rises, the alcohol will evaporate, right? So on this part here, the alcohol will evaporate into this tiny little vacuum which basically pushes the indices up because the mercury right here gets pushed up due to the alcohol evaporating and the mercury will push this metal indices up which means that this side here shows the maximum uh, maximum temperature and this consequently goes down right but when temperature decreases the alcohol on in this like, little vacuum basically um, condensates and it pushes the mercury down and this side rises up, which means that the metal indices on this side, which shows the minimum temperature, will be pushed up. And therefore, you can see how it's basically the inverse scale. Where going up here, it's colder. And going up here, it's hotter. And a quick note is that at the end of the day, the markers are put back to zero using a magnet to basically uh, reset everything. And then we have Stevenson screen which is basically a shelter for a meteorological instrument against precipitation and direct heat radiation from outside sources. So here is a Stevenson screen, and inside the screen there are different instruments, for example thermometer, and sometimes there's a wind vane up, uh, up, up here. A quick note is that the readings must be taken at the same time each day to ensure reliability. And here are some notes and features of the Stevenson screen. It's a wooden box standing on four legs, as you can see here, and it has a height of typically 1.21 meter above ground to avoid heat radiation, and from avoid heat radi radiated from the ground, which will affect the thermometer reading. And here are some more features. For example, it's painted white to reflect the sun's rays, and it's made of wood to avoid the conduction of heat inside the box because basically inside it has the thermometer, and it also has slatted sides to allow movement of air. And sometimes it's assisted by a motor if the air is not circulating really well inside and outside the box or the screen. And it's also placed on a, a grass covered surface which will reduce ground, uh, radiating ground heat. And as I mentioned, the instruments found inside the Stevenson screen and outside the Stevenson screen include these ones right here. And we'll now look at rainfall. As mentioned before, rainfall is measured using a rain gauge. And we have a, dark, a photo over here of a rain gauge. And it's basically a cylinder that is placed above ground to capture raindrops over 24 hours. And after 24 hours, it is basically reset. So here are some more notes on rain gauge. So a rain gauge is placed around 30 cm to 100 cm above ground level. And there are multiple reasons for that. For example, to prevent animals from disrupting or tampering with it and also to prevent rain from splashing up into the, from the ground to the funnel, which will affect the reading. And it's also important to keep the rain gauge at least two times the distance from the height of the nearest obstruction. So for example, let's say we have this um, rain gauge over here, and we have a 10 meter tree, like a tree, 
it's so it's a badly drawn tree, but it's um ten meters, ten meters tall. So ten meter. This means that the rain gauge has to be placed at least twenty meters away from the from the tree. Because if it were to be placed too close, then the um, the tree or the obstruction might be might interfere with the readings because there may be droplets of water, rain that will fall in, or basically from water or whatever things that will fall into the funnel. And we should also make sure that the top of the rain gauge is parallel to the ground, and we also need to keep the rain gauge away from any artificial precipitation, as it is quite obvious that you know these sources will affect the reading. And as I mentioned before, the rain will fall over the funnel for 24 hours. And after 24 hours, the it's basically collected and the water is measured, like the volume is measured, and the water is removed and it is basically reset. And this repeats every 24 hours. Then we have humidity, and it's basically a measure of the a measure of the amount of water vapor in the air, and it's measured using a wet and dry bulb hygrometer or thermometer. So here are some more quick notes on the wet and dry bulb thermometer or hygrometer. So here's a conversion table that is used along with the wet and dry bulb thermometer. So we have the dry bulb thermometer temperature and uh, basically the different readings that will give you the true value for the humidity. So the wet bulb thermometer, basically, is, basically it's, um, there are two parts to this. In this wet and dry bulb thermometer, there's a wet bulb thermometer and there's a dry bulb thermometer. So the wet bulb thermometer is placed in water to measure the temperature at 100% humidity because it's essentially in water and the dry bulb thermometer is exposed in air and then we can basically take the readings, the difference in readings between those two readings and that can be used to like basically find the relative percentage humidity of the air using this table right here. And moving on to air pressure, it's the force of the weight of the air on the earth's surface and it's measured using a barometer. And typically in IGCC geography, air pressure is measured in millibars, or it can also be measured in pascals as well. And there are other units for pressure, for example, in pascal, sorry, in bars, in atmospheres, or in with mercury, like so. And here's a diagram of a, of a barometer and measuring atmospheric pressure with some notes on barometer to the left. So as, we, as um, here's a quick note that bar, uh, pressure varies with temperatures and altitude, and the barometer can be either a, be a mercury barometer or an anaerobic barometer. And here's how we can interpret air pressure. The normal air pressure is around 1000 to 1300 millibars, but if the pressure is higher than the range right here, Basically, a high pressure is associated with no rain and low sea level and blue sky, which means that there will be no rain. We can think of it logically as if there's a high pressure, it means that the, um, it means that the air is pushing a lot on the Earth's surface so that the water vapor can evaporate, and this forms no clouds, and there will be no rain, and the sea level will be low. Conversely, the opposite would be low air pressure, what it means is that uh, it's associated with high rain and high sea level. As the air isn't pushing that much on the Earth's surface, this means that water can evaporate, which forms rain and therefore high sea level. And then we have wind direction and velocity. Wind direction is the direction at which the uh, wind is blowing from. It's a quite, uh, quite important where the wind is blowing from. And wind velocity is the speed at which the wind is traveling at. So here's some notes on wind vane. Wind vane is used to indicate wind direction, and if the wind comes from the west, we call it westerly wind, which basically relates to the wind direction. So if the wind comes from the west, we call it westerly wind. Then we have northerly wind, southerly wind, and easterly wind. Uh, wind. And then here's a diagram of cup anemometer and the wind direction vane right here, because these are the cup anemometer and the direction. And here are some notes on anemometer. Anemometer is an instrument that is used to measure how fast the wind is blowing. And it's typically used uh, cups like this to trap wind, which will therefore turn the anemometer. So it will basically turn. And as the cups turn, it will spin the rod, which is basically connected to a meter, 
which will give a reading on, on the number of rotations, which then will be converted to wind speed. And then we have sunshine, which is basically a measure of the number of hours of sunshine received at the place, and it can be recorded with a sunshine recorder. So here's what a sunshine recorder looks like. We have this glass sphere in the middle, surrounded by a metal frame. Like this is a metal frame. And the ship of card, as you can see, I'm zooming. The, uh, the, basically this ship of card, it basically goes around the metal frame. And it's placed below the sphere right here. So what this means is that once, uh, as the sun like, moves from here in the morning to the night, right, right here, it will basically shine on the glass sphere right here, which will burn a specific time. For example, if it's uh, say 10 a.m. over here, the sun will basically shine on the glass sphere, and the glass sphere will reflect the light, the sunlight, or refract the sunlight, and it will burn this place which corresponds to 10 a.m. So it's quite magical. So the card basically correlates uh, to hours and minutes and at the end of the day, the card is removed, analyzed, and replaced. Uh, a, typical of, a typical card looks like this. So you have this card right here, for example. Then you have basically hours block, like 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Like basically, yeah, for example, like this. And it can also be separated in 30 minutes, and so on. So here's just an example. It's not to scale or not to time scale. So let's say this corresponds to 10 a.m., right? So as the 10 a.m. sun shines, and it will basically burn the part where, it's co where it corresponds to 10 a.m., so this part here will be burnt. So this part here will be burnt, right? So when someone analyzes this card, they can, they can see that 10 a.m. is burnt. That means they know that during 10 a.m., there's a lot of sunlight. And let's say if 11 a.m., it's right here, and we can see that 11 a.m. is not burnt. This means that at 11 a.m. there's not much sunlight. And then lastly, we have cloud cover. And cloud covers are separated into different categories based on the shape and height above the ground. Sorry, clouds, not cloud cover. Clouds. So here's a diagram. We have basically three different layers. We have this layer right here. Or we have the outer, la the outer layer and the serious layer or the top layer. So it's almost split into the low, middle, and high, right? And they have, they have different shapes as well. For example, uh, these fluffy shapes are called cumulus. These long shape is called shutters. So if it's at the bottom, it's called, this is called shutters. But if it's at the middle, it's called auto shutters because auto basically refers to the middle. And then here as well, we have auto cumulus. And this is just cumulus. And then we have also shuttle cumulus which specifically relates to the shape and the, length and the size. And then we have zero at the top. And then this one right here, we have cumulonimbus, nimbus, which is basically uh, stretched across the whole three layers. And this is associated, associated with storm clouds. And then we have cloud cover, and it's measured in octas or eighths. And it's measured from a scale from zero to eight, as shown here. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and 9 is rarely used. So 0 means that the sky is completely clear, as shown here. It's a, the symbol right here just shows like a clear circle, whereas 8 means the sky is covered fully by clouds. That's right here. Right, so, so the sky is completely cloudy. And that's it for this video. And that's it for this video for 2.4 for weather, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you need any more learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it up in your browser at www.emitsyeasy.com And that's it for this video and I'll see you all in the next video for another video for RGCSE Geography. And here's to learning, make easy.